high buses. Nice to have you. Can you provide three predictions for investment management, let's say around 10 years from now? Sure, absolutely. And thanks for having me. I would say definitely number one, uh, passive overtaking, uh, active investing. We already seen this uh, pattern in the past 10 years. This will definitely continue in the next five to 10 years. I would say more uh, than 80% of the AUM will be uh, uh, of strategies following a passive strategy as opposed to active management due to uh, the returns that can deliver at the lower costs. Uh, number two, uh, ESG will become commonplace. Uh, we already see this trend. Uh, the biggest ETF launch of the, of the past 10 years was uh, an e ESG ETF. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, asset owners, uh, pension funds uh, will be, uh, if not all of them ESG compliant, most of them uh, starting from Europe, uh, then of course moving to uh, North America and Asia uh, later. Uh, all the core uh, uh, index benchmarks uh, will be uh, having uh, an ESG version of them, uh, so we can have uh, portfolios replicating those strategies. So definitely ESG will become commonplace uh, five years or ten years from now. And finally, I believe that machine learning uh, in the way that we use it today will become a commodity. Uh, mm -hmm. And then actually having access to unique alternative data will become your competitive advantage and then really uh, the way to generate alpha in the future. Okay, so um, in terms of ESG investing, how do you think AI is transforming ESG investing? Sure, uh, when we look at the marketplace today, I think there are basically two approaches. One uh, is uh, taking uh, data directly from the issuers, either by looking at service or by looking at self-disclosed information. A second approach uh, is trying to build a more unbiased uh, ESG framework by looking at uh, alternative sources, mm -hmm. taking into consideration not only shareholders, but also stakeholders as well. So by looking at NGOs, international organizations, uh, as well as other alternative data sources. And that's where uh, AI can come into play by leveraging techniques like natural language processing and computational linguistics that allow for a data pipeline that can process um, heterogeneous sources of information that can deliver several benefits. Number one, greater coverage. So now we are not only talking about large firms that are disclosing ESG information, uh, we can also talk about small caps as well as private companies. Number two, frequency. Uh, we can now not only rely on data that is disclosed on an annual basis, we can uh, have information that is updated monthly, on a daily or even on an intraday basis. And finally, granularity. Uh, we can go beyond E, S, and G, and then we can talk about really uh, multi-factor models mm -hmm. that are trying to bring granularity um, um, and uh, exposure to ESG, taking it to a next level. That's very interesting. Thank you for sharing your insight with us. Thank you very much. Base.